Tonight, we deck our halls, gather around the warm glow of propane forges and celebrate Christmas. All right, gentlemen, go ahead and open your gifts. Four Smiths join in on the holiday spirit in the hopes of making it to the top of Santa's list to win the best gift of all, the title of Force and Fire champion and 10,000 Christmas dollars. I'm Bill Young, I'm from Brewer, Mississippi. I rodeoed for about 20 years and pretty much everything we do is a competition. I've been called a Scrooge by my family, so I'm hoping I can be a Scrooge to a few of these other Smiths. <laughs> my name is Jamie Chandler. I have a BFA in metalsmithing. That's probably gonna be my edge in this competition because having three hours to make a knife is how I learned how to make a knife. My name is Boyd Ritter. I'm a mechanical engineer from White Rock, New Mexico. At home, my son likes to come in and do the Will Willis countdown every time he's tired of me being in the garage by myself. I'm really uh, excited about Christmas, and hopefully I get a really good Christmas present at $10,000. My name is Ben Arlotta. I'm from Jackson Hole, Wyoming. I'm a junkyard dog, so if it's hardenable, I'll try to make a sharp thing out of it. I have three priorities really coming into this competition. Produce the best piece that I can, to challenge the other competitors, and to win. Blade Smiths, welcome to the forge, and Merry Christmas. <laughs> it would seem your Christmas wishes are about to turn into Christmas nightmares as we move into three rounds of edged weapon making competition designed to test every aspect of your skills in front of three wise men who will tell us which of you is our next Forged and Fire champion, leaving here with a check for $10,000. Let's go ahead and meet Santa's helpers now. Up first, ABS Master Smith, Jay Nielsen. Next, Historic Weapons Recreation Specialist, David Baker. And last, Edged Weapons Specialist, Doug Markaida. Now, gentlemen, for most people, their favorite part of Christmas is the gift. So I have some for each of you. As I call you up, one at a time, you'll come and select a gift and take it back to your anvils. Don't open it just yet. Wait for everybody else. Ben, you're up first. You're automatically going right back to nine years old and just excited to tear into that box and see what present's waiting for you. Bill, you're up. Please come and select your gift. Jamie, please select your gift. All right, Boyd, you're up. I'm picking up my box and I, I hear a rattling. I am really not excited to tear into this gift at all. I'm hoping for a nice solid chunk of steel. I don't think anything in this box is that. All right, gentlemen, you have your gifts. Go ahead and tear into them. Bill, it is a 52100 high carbon chromium steel ball bearing. Jamie, that is round stock W1 steel. Boyd, that is 1095 square stock. And then over here on the end, Ben, that is 5160 spring steel. Gentlemen, I would like you to take these high carbon steel gifts that you've been given and turn them into a signature blade in your signature style by combining them with the mild steel of these toys underneath the tree to create a sand my blade. Keep in mind that in the second round, you'll be attaching handles to these blades to turn them into fully functional weapons that will be tested for strength and durability in a Yule log chop and for edge retention in a Christmas light slice. I remind you that at the end of this round, after the judges have inspected your work, one of you will have to surrender your blade and leave the forge. Good luck. Your three hour starts now. And ho, ho, ho we go. Jay, we gave our competitors four different types of steel. Do you think that somebody has more of an obstacle? See, actually, it's kind of great the way we got this broken up because everybody's got a challenge. Two of our contestants have to forge well to get more steel. Our 52100, he doesn't have to forge well, but that core is huge. And then you've got Ben on the end with the 5160. Great forging steel, but he's got to uncoil it to get into forge and work. Big piece of 5160 is heating up. I'm going to work on my mild steel, stay ahead of the game. For mild steel, I chose the dropout tube from a little kid's tricycle. It's hollow. All I have to do is cut it on one side, and I can open it up and have access to a flat piece of steel. Step one for the 5160 is to get it uncoiled and make sure that I have enough material to work with. 
Christmas is my favorite holiday, and what better way to spread cheer than with fire and force, man? It's beautiful. Sanmai literally means three layers in the Japanese language. Right. Can we refer to it as Sanmai? Come on. Will, I appreciate the present, but I would have much rather had a cell phone, something, anything. I've never had any luck with 52100 steel. I got the big ball of 52100, and it just takes forever to heat it up. I cut the handle off of the wagon. It was a solid shaft. Cut it off, tug it in forward, drawn it out, flattened it out, cut it in two pieces. I'm ready to stick it on. I got my W1 round stock cutoffs, so I'm just trying to get those drawn out into bars so I can stack them together and forge them into something I can actually use. While that's heating up in the fire, I start prepping my uh, mild steel. I'm just trying to get the paint off of these, otherwise it'll cause inclusions and make a whole bunch of fumes that are kind of deadly and poisonous. Boyd actually has the 1095 square stock, a lot of little pieces. I wish I had a better present, but I must have been doing some pretty bad stuff to, to get out of there. <laughs> I've never forged welded anything with so many directions it could move when I start to press down on it. So, I'm thinking at this point, I'm just gonna get it really, really hot and hit it on the press. I rotate the bar, and all my seams blow to pieces. Now I'm in full panic mode. It's just a nightmare at this point. Ben cut a tube off of one of our toys. It's not gonna give him much steel for anything. Really kind of concerned of where he's going with this. I realize that this is way too short because I wanted the length of the mild steel to cover the length of the hardenable steel, and this is simply not going to cut it. So I grabbed the pogo stick, and I decided to use the part of the handlebars. I'm just trying to focus on the problem that I've got and solve it, and then we'll move on to the next one. You have just two hours remaining to finish your blades. Look at the size of that piece of steel that Bill keeps cycling in and out of that board. The key to working with 52100 is keeping it hot and not trying to work it cold. I'm not real good at waiting, but now I've got to wait. I uh, formed out all my uh, individual pieces, stacked them together, board welded them, drew it out, and now I'm going to attach the mild steel to the sides, board weld that on, and then I'm going to make the profile of my knife. I feel behind, but I'm going to feel that no matter what, so I just got to keep on moving. I'm trying to cut some usable pieces out of my billet. Boyd's already had one flawed weld. He's trying to put it back together, trying to weld it again. So Boyd's scrambling. He's running out of time. I'm going to restack, clean up these faces, get everything nice and tight, re-weld it, put it back in the forge. Time's ticking away, and I can't afford to mess this weld up. Now I've got my three pieces of steel. It's time to tack all three of them together, get them hot, and make that billet. I start getting it hot to weld. So I'm in the press, and the whole sand mic comes apart. Oh, 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 man. One whole side came loose, popped all the welds off. I have to start over. And if I don't get this billet set, I go home. So I'm in the press, and the whole sand mic comes apart. Oh, 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 man. One whole side came loose. I just bailed on it straight away. You know, don't chase bad idea. Now I have to find a new piece of mild steel. That's what we're doing. See the foot pad on the tricycle? There's a bunch of material there. Ben's got about 90 minutes remaining to turn this uh, disaster into a little bit of a Christmas miracle. I finally get this big ball drawn out. And I've been a welder all my life. I really know my way around a welder. I've got my two pieces of mild steel. I line them up on the spine of the blade. What I do like about Bill's setup is he welded all the way along those edges. Right. So you don't get any atmosphere inside. I'm drawing my steel out. I'm looking around. I see that I'm gaining on everybody else. And things are starting to look up for me. You can just tell that Jamie having a hard time wrangling this hammer, man. That's fatigue. It's past two hours, and my grip is starting to slip. I can't hold on to things as tight. My, my arm is tired. I'm getting hot. It's like running a marathon. It's just so stressful and so physical. It's much more of an endurance race than like a talent contest. 
Blade Smiths, you have just 60 minutes remaining to finish your work. Boyd hasn't started with any mild steel at all. All he's working with is his hardenable steel. Oh, wow. I need to get my mild steel. And I see the pogo stick. Fortunately, the pedals were metal instead of plastic. <laughs> They're actually really thick pieces of mild steel that will help me add the mass that is missing to my knife. I'm just going to set it very delicately with the hammer. I don't see anything moving. My billet feels very solid. Nothing splitting apart on me. I'm starting to do the happy dance, but I have a lot of catch-up to do. My first attempt at the weld didn't really go all that hot. For this weld to make sure that it holds, I'm going to put more tack welds on it. I'm not messing with the press, going over to Big Blue. And this time, it works. But that clock doesn't stop ticking, so I just have to quench. Ben has to be really careful about not overheating that, not have his seams pull apart. There's a warp in that. I laid the blade on my anvil, grab it by the point, and try to straighten out that bend right there. Those judges will judge a finished knife for me today. Absolutely. Blade Smiths, 30 minutes. I'm trying to drill my holes for my pins, for my tang. I can't get the high-speed drill bits to drill it. I can't get the carbide drill bits to drill it. I'm getting a little bit frustrated on the drill press. I don't think most people would use a octet acetylene torch to cut a hole in their tank, but go get the blowtorch, blow me three holes in it. Well, man, we've never seen a guy just torch the holes for his tank before. It, it works. That's cool. I like that. Jamie, right now, is the temperature that, oh, perfect. There we go. Perfect. Nice. Oh, yeah, stir it up, baby, stir it up. Whoa! Yeah, you really don't want to pull your blade out of the oil until it kind of stops smoking. Uh, Jamie's got a warp. I run to the vise, and I just push my weight on it just enough to get it beyond the bend. 10 minutes, Blade Smith! I need to get this thing quenched. And it's either going to come out straight as an arrow or not. And I noticed that warp start picking up. It's not a terrible warp. I'm hoping it's something that I, I can get with the grinder. It seems like it's hardened well. I need to finish my blade. Five, four, three, two, one. Blade Smith, shut down your machines, drop your tools. Woo! This first round of Christmas competition is over. Oh, 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 oh. I'm nervous. <laughs> the judges watched me chase that weld for the better part uh, of the entire competition. And just based on the steel that I had, I did what I could. So we'll see. <laughs> Blade Smith, that was a tough first round of competition. Now it's time for the judges to take a closer look at what you've done with your time. Bill, you're up first. Please present your blade to the judges. All right, Bill, what I really love seeing is looking down and seeing those three layers. I mean, there's no question that they're there. Really well done. But there's still a ton of steel here. This is a weighty beast right now. When I'm holding this blade, there's just not a lot of stop to it. Figure out what you're going to do with that handle and lose some weight off of this thing, and you're well on your way. Nicely done. Thank you. Jamie, please present your blade to the judges. Now I can see the difference between the hard and the soft steels, but instead of just a line, I see a seam going down, but uh, a lot of weight. Lose a lot of this mass, and hopefully doing that, you can get rid of these seams, too, if you move on. But it was a good choice what you did of adding more steel. So good job. Thank you. All right, Boyd, please present your blade to the judges. The one thing that I do see here, you have some seams here on the spine. If you move forward, that's something to consider. But overall, solid piece of steel, and we just need to find out, hidden tang or not? Thanks. All right, Ben, please present your blade to the judges. You did a good job drawing that 5160 out initially, but you got it long and thin. And then when you started doing those welds, your welds were long and that material was thin. And I think it, it shows in, in that there's just places where that material's burnt away. Yes, sir. You didn't, I mean, you pushed through to the end on this thing. You, you, you were really fighting that steel. Exactly. Um, if you move forward, the biggest issues are these delaminations. Finding a way to fix that might be pretty tough. Yes, sir. 
But um, uh, props for pushing through. Thank you. Gentlemen, judges have deliberated. They've made their final decision. It's time for one of you Smiths to leave the forge. The bladesmith leaving the forge is. Ben, your blade didn't make the cut. Ben, this competition is all about problem solving the challenges we give you. And you did just that. Took you two tries, but you turned in the blade. At the end of the day, your blade was least finished than that of your competitors. For that reason, we sent you home. I understand. Ben, unfortunately, at this time, I have to ask you to please surrender your blade. I did my best to be able to stick to my plan and dealt with problems as they came. Just made a mistake in the mild steel that I chose. We'll learn from it and we'll get better. You only lose if you don't learn anything, you know? It wasn't a victory, but it certainly wasn't a loss either. Bladesmiths, congratulations. You've made it to the second round of this competition. And now that your blades have been tempered, it's time to attach holiday handles to them using that nutcracker right over there. You'll have two hours in which to assemble your handles and get them ready for weapons testing. We'll be testing them for strength and durability in a Yule log chop and for edge retention in a Christmas light slice. So I remind you that at the end of this round, after your blades have been tested, one of you will be selected to surrender your blade and leave the forge with no milk and cookies. Good luck. Your two hour starts now. Ah! All right. So this nutcracker, it's made out of pretty solid looking wood, man. Out come the hammers. Oh my there God. You go. There, there we go. There you go. There you go. Well, oh. That's good. That's good. That's good. oh, and again. Oh! That's good. That's good. That's good. Some child is sitting at home crying while his toy is destroyed. I need to get the slight warp that I was dealing with. Out. I need to grind away those cold shunts along the spine of the knife, and then I'll jump and start dealing with the, the little man guy, I think. <laughs> Bill needs some kind of swell in the back because he's got so much blade. So I just cut a little piece of mild steel, welded it on, made a flare, and ground it down, and feels a lot better. It won't try to fly out of your hand anyway. Right now, I'm just trying to get all my handle pieces assembled so I can get them glued up and set. I got this nice red micarta. I got this hunk of the nutcracker. I'm going to dye these green. So I'm pretty much just trying to turn my knife handle into a Christmas present that I can give to the judges. I take my wooden pieces and my spacer and I glue those down to the, the black spacers so that when I pull them off the board, it'll be just two solid slats that I can just work with. I need to give it at least five minutes to set up. So I grab my knife and go and try to fix these problems. Right now I'm getting my handle fitted up. I ended up using one of the legs off of uh, the little soldier guy. I'm feeling the pressure right now. I'm still working with my fit up, so I'm a little stressed at the moment. Well, Bill's back over to the drill press with that tang that's giving him so much trouble. The holes in my scales, they're not big enough right now for the pins that I'm planning on using. So I'm trying to drill it out. It starts to scream a little bit, then it hangs up in the hole, and I'm stuck. Bill's got the drill bit stuck on his tank. Oh. I can't get it to move. I'm trying to twist this drill bit out, and there's a possibility that it could snap right there where that hole is. This could be a $10,000 mistake right here. I finally just have to just bust it off and knock it out with a punch. So now I'm going back with the acetylene torch and just hope for the best. Blade Smiths, you got 60 minutes remaining to finish your work. I grind for about 30 minutes and I go and check on my handle pieces. And I look at my, my handle slats and I take the clamps off and it's looking really nice and I go to pick them up and I glued it to my cutting board. And I'm freaking out. Yeah, it's like Jamie just boxing these materials onto the table. I hit the first one off. And I told your guts there, Jamie. Yeah, that's, that's kind of a dangerous way of doing that. I'm going to hit the second one, and only half of it flies off. And there it falls apart. So all that work is for nothing now. This is a stupid mistake. I need to figure out what to do, and fast. Uh -oh. It's like Jamie just boxing these materials onto the table. I'm going to hit the second one, and only half of it flies off. And there it falls apart. apart. I'm just going to try to line up all these little pieces into one block, which is the thing I didn't want to do in the first place, and I guess it was unavoidable. Boyd's a little bit behind the power curve doing this, you know, through tang construction. I really would have liked the option for a full tang, but 
Uh, just based on the steel that I had, uh, I couldn't do that. I don't think Boyd mixed his epoxy very thoroughly because That'd things be aren't drying over yeah. there. You need to give the epoxy time to do its work. I don't have time to do that, so I'm going to rest it a bit, and I just grab the knife. Oh, oh boy. It's called the good enough. I'll take it to the grinder. I was expecting this would be a real fast, easy trim. You know, sawdust everywhere. And nope, it's not moving at all. And I'm looking at the clock, and it's ticking down. I'm thinking it's a chopping and slicing competition, not a handle competition. I need to get sharpening and finishing my blade. 30 minutes, Blade Smiths! I'm a little bit nervous because I might be a little slower on putting handles on than I am at forging. If Bill doesn't make his handle out of material found in that nutcracker, he's disqualified automatically with no deliberation. I'm using my card on because I'm thinking it'll stay together with this log chop better than a piece of wood. We got to use part of the nutcracker, so I'm going to use his beard. I'm going to just cut a strip out of it and lay it around the outside edge of my handle. And I think that that's a really bad idea. The knife is great. Like, don't mess it up by just gluing fur to the handle. Who had a fur handled anything ever? I go over here to the grinder, and I put a real nice fine edge on it. And I'm leaving it heavy because I'm worried about the log chop. I don't want to thin it out and have it break. I want to see Jay just beat the fire out of it. Five minutes! I'm running behind. I uh, got my hand of material on, but I still have to shape that completely. I still have to take care of the edge bevels and sharpening and get these hollows a little deeper. Five, four, three, two, one. Blaze Smith, shut down your machines, drop your tools. This second round of competition is over. I just spent all this time making this piece of artwork, and I'm just going to watch someone beat the absolute crap out of it. I want to see it do well, but I also know about all the mistakes involved. All right, Bladesmiths, welcome to one of my favorite parts of our competition, the strength test. To honor Christmas, I'm going to take each of your knives, and I'm going to beat them into these Yule logs. Bill, you're up first. You ready to go? Try me if you want to. <laughs> Jay is going to test our blade on a log chop. If there's a crack in my blade, when Jay busts that log with it, it could just break in half. You know, it's not really a Yule log without a fire. All right, Bill, survived. Good job. Only problem we have is your blade picked up a pretty good bend in that test. Your handle's a little hard to hold on to. The uh, beard addition actually makes it a little slippery, so it's a couple times I had to readjust. But you're sharp. It's all in one piece. Good job. Thank you. So after seeing that, Jamie, how's your Christmas spirit? It's pretty good. Good? <laughs> all right, well, let's test it. I just watched Bill's blade perform, and that thing just smash those logs right up. And I'm so worried because my blade is so much lighter and thinner than his. It already has a warp in it. I am so worried that my blade is just going to snap on the first strike. Congratulations, Jamie. Stayed together. The only problem I have is it's a very small handle. It was kind of hard to hold on to. But it's tight, it's sharp. Good job. Thank you. Boy, it's getting hot up there, but I got a little more in me. How about you? You bet. All right, let's do it. When Jay goes to banging on that Yule log, there's a lot of stress that's going to be built up right at that front joint behind the guard. I'm worried that I have empty cavities in that handle that are just unreinforced, and after Two or three strikes, you're just going to crumble. Good job, Boyd. Your edge is still sharp, but your handle is big. So it's a little awkward, but survived. Good job. Thank you. 
All right, bladesmiths, this is the sharpest test the Christmas light slice. To find out how sharp your blade is, I will take your weapon and slash across these Christmas lights. A sharp blade should cut easily and give me clean cuts. Bill, you're up first. You ready for this? Try me if you want to. All right, let's do this. All right, Bill, let's talk about your blade here. It's a heavy beast. You still have a warp here, but more importantly for this test, it will cut. Thank you. All right, Jamie, your turn. You ready? I am. Let's do this. All right, James, talk about your blade here. It's got a very sharp edge that cuts through in two slices. Your handle construction is comfortable. I can index when I'm slicing with this blade, and more importantly, sir, it'll cut. Thank you. Oh, boy, it's time. Are you ready? Oh, no. <laughs> We're gonna do it anyways. All right, Boyd, it felt good swinging your weapon. You got a good weight to this and a sharp edge. Now your handle construction, a little bit on the wider side, but more importantly, sir, it will cut. Thank you. All right, bladesmiths, each of you has used a little help from the Nutcracker to make the blades that we tested. And now it's time for one of you to leave the forge. The bladesmith leaving the forge is All right, bladesmiths, each of you has used a little help from the Nutcracker to make the blades that we tested. And now it's time for one of you to leave the forge. Bill, your blade didn't make the cut. Bill, you brought us a fine looking piece of sand my steel. This came down to three things. The weight of your blade, it's a really heavy piece. The handle on that blade, and most of all, the fact that you took that bend in the strength test. That's a good indicator that there's something going on in that steel that's not right. All right, Bill, please surrender your blade. I think the judges made the right decision. I made a decision to leave my blade thick so it wouldn't break during a log chop, and the thickness and the weight of it is essentially what bent my blade. I'm not coming home with a Christmas present, but I am coming home. Jamie Boyd, congratulations. You guys are in the final round of this Christmas-themed competition. Now, we're sending you back to your home forges to recreate this iconic weapon from history. The 1796 British Light Cavalry Sabre. The 1796 English Light Cavalry Sword was first used by British Dragoons in the Napoleonic Wars. Unlike the subtly bowed French cavalry sabers of the era, the English version had a deep curve whose width increased as it reached the tip. Although this design weakened the blade's thrusting capabilities and made every slash heavier and more brutal. Designed to inflict maximum damage during large melees on the battlefield, the saber had the ability to remove heads and limbs with a single stroke. The light cavalry sword is the weapon of the traditional wooden Christmas nutcracker and can be seen at the iconic soldier's side in the latest film adaptation of the Tchaikovsky Nutcracker Ballet, The Nutcracker in the Four Realms. The length of this blade must be between 31 and 33 inches. It must have a fuller on each side of the blade that runs to within nine inches of the tip. You must have longes on both sides of the blade, a stirrup guard, and a backstrap handle. I've always wanted to build a saber. They've always had very sleek lines to me. They're smooth, they're fast, and now I have an excuse to do it. You'll have four days at your home forges in which to complete this challenge. At the end of those four days, you'll return and present your swords to our panel of expert judges. After they thoroughly tested your Christmas sabers, they'll declare one of you the Forge and Fire champion and give you a pretty nice gift. All right, gentlemen, good luck. We'll see you in four days. Cheers, Max. We're in Grand Rapids, Michigan. 
and this is Vulcan Studios. I'm gonna start with one chunk of 5160 spring steel, and I want to sandwich two hunks of leaf spring to create a sand my billet. The goal today is to just get the sand my billet put together and then stretch out the billet as much as I possibly can so tomorrow I can really break it home. And there it is. I officially burned my billet into two pieces, and I am definitely falling behind on the clock. I have to make a whole new billet. I'm stretching the billet, and I see a little seam that's starting to come apart, so I put the flux back on it, I put it back in the fire. And I see this big crack up here. I wouldn't say first day wasted, but it's looking pretty close. I'm happy to be back home here in northern New Mexico Christmas. My overall plan right now is I'm doing a Damascus blade out of W2 and 15 and 20. Okay, got all my seams closed. I'm gonna bring it up to temperature. I start drawing out my billet. Everything on the power hammer is working excellent. So with the time I have left, I'm gonna get it cut, stacked, and I'll weld it up tomorrow. I started my day off with 70% of yesterday's billet. Third time's a charm. Just decided to take more leaf spring, put it on the outside of the billet to add a little bit more beef, and keep going with the sand mine. I want to stick. For whatever reason, I cannot get the metals to fuse. My small failures are compounding into catastrophes. It's do or die time. I want to stick. For whatever reason, I cannot get the metals to fuse. Bail on the sand mine. I have to start over again. I go in my junk pile and I find a nice two inch bar of tool steel. I'm very disappointed. I have to give up on my original sand mine construction, but I have to make something that I can actually finish. Forged out as far as I could go. I don't have enough material. I'm about five to six inches short. If I go any thinner, it's gonna be way too thin for the final piece. It's a real way to end day two. Morning of day two, I got my steel all blocked up, ready to go. I think I see cracks. My last one cracked all the way down to about the center of that building. There's no recovering from that. <laughs> They're just junk. I have to start plan B. We're starting over. We're going to go mono steel with the 5160. The plus side is my bar is drawn out a lot further than it was. I've lost half my day messing around with this Damascus, not to mention yesterday. So we're just going to go all out and move as fast as we can, see if we can catch up. I was expecting to have a quenched sword blade by the end of yesterday. I don't even have the sword blade yet. My emergency plan is I'm taking two pieces of mild steel and making a sand my billet on the tang end of my carbon steel billet in order to be able to draw it out long enough. <sighs> Man. I cannot believe this thing just cracked on me. I've used the technique before and it, it works, but I'm running out of time. I, I can't just mess around with something that's not gonna work. So I abandon it and I just grab a leaf spring. Pressure is really on, but I'm gonna finish. I'm either gonna turn something in that I can be proud of or I'm not showing up and I'm, I'm showing up. I'm gonna finish a blade and I'm gonna go there and show them what I'm made of. Mama didn't raise no quitter. Today, I need to finish up that handle and guard setup and I need to concentrate a lot on the blade. I mean, ultimately, this is a really light weapon. It needs to stay a light weapon. I do have a lot to get done and a short amount of time. But luckily, I have my own personal Will Willis here. So at some point today, I will get a countdown and let me know when all of this is done. I'm going to put Christmas on this handle. I think it's cool. Good job, buddy. <laughs> Jamie Boyd, welcome back to The Forge. The weather outside is frightful, and I guarantee you what lies ahead is frightful as well. You boys have had four days at your home forges to work on the 1796 British Light Cavalry Sabre. Boyd, tell us about your blade. I had a lot of fun with this build. 
the blade ended up being 5160. The rest of the metal components are mild steel. The handle is deerskin wrapped bloodwood. All right, Jamie, tell us about your blade. It was a really tough four days. I ended up making the blade out of spring steel. The guard component is mild steel, copper, and some hardwood as the handle. All right. What lies ahead are three tests. There will be a strength test, a sharpness test, and up first, Doug is going to carve the roast beast. Doug? Bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. Keeping with this Christmas theme, I'm going to take your weapons and deliver some slashes and chops on this Christmas ham. Jamie, you're up first. You ready for this? Let's do it. Let's do this. I'm a little nervous about being first up for the kill test. I don't know what's going to happen, how well it's going to do. I am equal parts nervous and excited. All right, Jamie. The first thing that I noticed is the extreme weight. Automatically, I can feel the stress on my hand. It wants to fall forward. Now let's talk about the blade. This is a chopper that gets work done in three chops. Your weapon, sir, will kill. Thank you. All right, Boyd, where you're naughty or nice, because it's your turn. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Jamie's blade performed really well. I mean, it sliced through the pig like it wasn't even there. So now I'm a little nervous about my blade. My blade is going to have to do at least as well for me to even have a chance. All right, Boyd, you nailed the weight. This proves that a light, sharp blade is just as deadly as a heavier sword. Overall, sir, your nutcracker saber will kill things. All right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test. Now, to test the strength of your sabers, I will be chopping into this ice block. Jamie, you're first. You ready? I am. I'm kind of nervous about this strength test. It's so heavy, it's going to be hard to control once it hits that ice. And uh, because there's so much weight, it might actually bend my sword. I could be going home. I'm kind of nervous about this strength test. Because there's so much weight, it might actually bend my sword. biggest issue I have with your blade is its weight. But for this test, it's a strong blade. It held up, so good job. Thank you. All right, Boyd, you ready? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so, Boyd, now, your blade's still sharp. It still has a perfect edge. Didn't take any damage that way. But we did pick up a bit of a warp towards the tip. I mean, it's definitely an issue. It's not so far out that it wouldn't cut. Everything else is still tight and together. Good job. Yes, sir. All right, bladesmiths. Now it's time to find out if there's any edge left in your weapon. This is the sharpness test, the Christmas tree trim. To find out how sharp your edges are, I will trim this tree in the Markaida family Christmas tree tradition. Jamie, you're up first. Are you ready for this? Trim away.
All right, Jamie, let's talk about your edge here. It is a little bit on the obtuse side, and it's still heavy. But on every stroke, I'm able to trim this tree. Overall, sir, it will cut. Thank you. All right, Boyd, it's your turn. Are you ready to do some Christmas tree trimming? You bet. All right, let's do this. All right, Boyd. So, your edge is sharp, and the weight that you have for this, I didn't have to reset for every cut that I did. I just go up, cut up, cut up, and cut. Overall, sir, it'll cut. Thanks. Oh, Jamie had issues with weight. I was good with weight, but my blade bent during mm -hmm. the strength test. Right now, we're pretty even. So basically, it's down to a heavy blade and a bent blade, and I am just shaking in my boots. All right, gentlemen, the judges and I have had a quick conference, and they've made their final determination about which of you is the Forge and Fire champion and who has to leave the Forge. The Bladesmith leaving the Forge is... Jamie. Now, unfortunately, Jamie, your blade did not make the cut. That's because it's very heavy and unwieldy, and for that reason, I have to ask you to please leave the Forge. I feel really disappointed, but I'm not surprised at all. I know how heavy my sword was. I just wish I could have done better. Making that sword was such a struggle, and after cutting my time down to like 10 hours, I still actually got something done. I feel good about that. Boyd, congratulations. You are the Forest and Fire champion, and that is a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Merry Christmas, my friend. You got anything to say to the world? Uh, Merry Christmas. <laughs> All right, my friend, come on over and shake our hand. <laughs> I'm really happy the way that the sword turned out. I was a little nervous when I saw it take that bend, but I couldn't ask for a better performance out of it. $10,000 is a great Christmas gift to me. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. My, my son will be off the walls probably for the next month and a half. 